No problem. All right. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Awesome. All right. Uh, thank you, Julian, for the very nice uh, introduction. So again, everyone, uh, hello. Uh, greetings from Helsinki. My name is Felix uh, from the University of Helsinki, and I'm here to share a little bit of my results from my PhD project, uh, basically where I'm uh, analyzing the stability and interfacial absorption the behavior uh, of pressurized hot water extracted birch silence as emulsifiers. Uh, so briefly, I will introduce you about the uh, pressurized hot water extracted silent that I'm using a little bit. Then I'm introducing you slightly to the methods that I'm using for these parts of my, of my project. Then some results and then some conclusions so far. Uh, all right, so uh, birch or uh, as a type of hardwood uh, is actually an, one of the most important tree species in the Finnish forest industry. However, in the pulp and paper industry, only half of the biomass extracted from birch is used uh, economically, which is the cellulose part. The rest of it, lignin and hemicellulose, uh, in which, uh, in this case, uh, glucuronoxylan, so basically silos, linear silos chains with uh, pendants of methyl glucuronic acid. Uh, they're normally burned, uh, burned as energy to fuel the plants. Uh, however, there is an, inter uh, an interest to valorize these lignin and hemicellulose. And one way to do it is by performing pressurized hot water extraction to the to the uh, to the wood chips before they are processed for the cellulose, and what we get is this extract, crude extract. It's a really nice powder, uh, brown in color, and as it happens, they act as a really good emulsifier. That uh, that is good uh, in terms of physical stability. They pr they produce emulsions that are comparable to commercial stabilizers. And additionally, they give chemical stability because of the lignin content that is uh, co-extracted uh, during the process. And it is, uh, we, and our colleagues have found that it, they can prevent oil oxidation in the emulsion system. Uh, however, it's a little bit complicated to explain what is going on because this is a very complex mixture. Uh, it has at least three different components. Uh, first of all, is the silan chains itself. Uh, then we have lignin in, uh, in the form of micro and nanoparticles. And the third component is a combination of the two, which we call the lignin carbohydrate complex, where we have the lignin and the silan con uh, connected to each other in, with covalent bonds. What makes things further complicated is that you can uh, partition this extract into two using ethanol, which is the soluble and insoluble fraction. However, these soluble and insoluble fraction both perform worse in terms of uh, uh, emulsion, stabi uh, physical stability of the emulsions compared to the crude extract. And so what we are really facing here is a rather mysterious interface. We don't really know what is going on at the, uh, at there. For example, how does it exactly stabilize the emulsions and which component is essential in the stabilization mechanism? Is it the silan? Is it the lignin? Is it the lignin carbohydrate complex or do they somehow cooperate in some way? And what is also absorbed at the interface? Is it the solid particles? Uh, do they act as, uh, as pickering emulsifiers or do they act as soluble molecules in a surfactant manner uh, model. Uh, prob another problem is that because of this, the, the nature of this extract being a natural product from trees, it's very complex. It's a polydispersed mixture, uh, and you can get different uh, different products from different trees from different regions, and so it's very much difficult to define. Uh, 
this this complex mixture we can't we don't it's difficult to define this molecular weight it's defined to uh, difficult to define the length of the chains the size of the lignin everything so what we can do is to do a comparative study and compare uh, these hemicellulosis uh, with standard reference emulsifiers uh, and so the i am using here two methods First of all, about the emulsion stability, where we used model uh, emulsion system. Uh, we used hexadecane, 5% weight by weight, and 1% weight by weight emulsifier in the buffer, which is uh, 25 millimolar citric acid at pH 4.5. And we used high pressure homogenization. And we monitor the particle size, uh, zeta potential, and uh, uh, how the droplets look like under optical microscope. And we monitor them from uh, freshly made up to 96 hours after uh, the fabrication of the emulsions. Uh, and then for the second part, I'm, I'm try I was trying to uh, understand the interfacial adsorption. Uh, and I'm doing this by using optical tensiometry, uh, using this reverse pendant drop. So instead of having the water face hanging from the needle, I'm instead using uh, uh, the oil in the needle and then the entire oil itself is immersed in the in the aqueous phase so for the oil phase i'm using water saturated hexadecane uh, to prevent uh, oswald ripening and for the aqueous phase um, i was using emulsifier dissolved in the same buffer that i was i was making my emulsions with uh, the drop size at around 9 to 12 microliters and i measured them for at least 20 hours at room temperature and then i fitted the drop shape over time uh, fitted with young Laplace uh, equation. And from this study, I will be getting uh, what we call the dynamic interfacial tension, which is basically the evolution of interfacial tension over time. Uh, so from the, from the freshly uh, made interface, when drop is first made at the end of the needle uh, to the end of the measurement time. Uh, and so first, before going to the results, I will explain to you what samples that I'm using. So first, the silence themselves. Uh, I'm using the, uh, the crude extract, uh, sprayed right silent. Uh, we call them here SGX. Uh, then I'm using partially purified uh, samples. Uh, one is ethanol precipitated. We call them EGX. And ethanol soluble uh, fraction, we call them ESGX. And to make things a little bit more interesting, we added also uh, a uh, synthesized uh, silan, derivatized uh, silan, uh, where, where we carboxymethylated the silans and we call them CMGX, just to add slightly more negative charge groups to the, to the uh, system. And as it happens along this, uh, as we go further towards the right here, towards the right of the series, uh, we have less lignin here and also more negative uh, charge to the system. And so we, we will be able to see whether uh, the electrostatic interaction has some role to play uh, in, the, in the adsorption. And as references, I'm, I was using four different uh, standard or reference commercial uh, emulsifiers. Uh, they can be divided into two groups. The first is the soluble polysaccharides, uh, where I chose methyl cellulose and carboxymethyl cellulose, uh, and also pickering emulsifiers, uh, where I used uh, desulfated cellulose nanocrystals and cellulose nanocrystals, because uh, there had been indications before that the silence might exist as uh, solid particles instead of as soluble polysaccharides. Uh, and also, they can be divided into those with less negative charge and more negatively charged, just to compare the different, uh, whether, whether then we have similarities between these uh, reference uh, emulsifiers. All right, so uh, first I will go towards the emulsion stability uh, study. So the first result that I'm going to show you is this is at the potential where we show uh, the effective surface potential well, not exactly on the surface, but there is this uh, electrical double layer surrounding the emulsion droplets that is uh, that can contribute to the stability of the emulsion. Generally, the higher absolute value of the potential that you get, the more stable uh, the emulsion should be. 
uh, and for our emulsions, uh, we found out that the greater potential value remains constant throughout storage time. Uh, some of them has quite uh, some fluctuations, for example, with CMC, but then the error uh, standard deviation, sorry, uh, is quite high that we would still consider them being constant over time. And here we see that the carboxymethylated derivatives, the carboxymethyl cellulose and anionic uh, cellulose nanocrystals uh, with the sulfate groups uh, are, are mostly around minus 30 millivolts uh, in the zeta potential, which we would expect that their emulsions would be more uh, stable compared to those with lower absolute values of the zeta potential. However, this was not the case. Uh, so first of all, uh, this is the particle size distribution uh, that we got from light scattering experiments. Uh, if we see the initial uh, size distribution, which is here in the uh, darker lines, we can see that these silans can produce uh, fairly submicron particles or droplets, uh, which are comparable to the soluble polysaccharides uh, emulsifier. Uh, but when, when we measure the particle size after 96 hours, we can see that they are less uh, stable compared to the soluble polysaccharides and to the anionic uh, cellulose nanocrystals here. Uh, and as it happens, uh, along the different types of silence themselves, with SGX having the most lignin content, ethanol precipitated uh, GX or silan having uh, the next amount of uh, lignin and CMGX having the least amount of lignin, we see that uh, the destabilization happens much faster. Uh, that is shown by this second peak over here that it grows much higher with CMGX uh, and EGX compared to the spray dried crude extract. Uh, which we can correlate to, to uh, that if the sample of or the silan has more lignin, then we would we would see the slower droplet growth or something that we would say that physically they are more stable. Uh, except of course compared to this desulfated uh, cellulose nanocrystals, which unfortunately are quite unstable in terms to droplet uh, size. Uh, and yes, uh, when, when we see the emulsions under the microscope, we can see that if we group them silans, uh, soluble polysaccharides and pickering emulsifiers, they have very different morphologies in how the droplets are assembled. With silans, we see that uh, there are quite large droplet distribution that are easily aggregated, especially after 96 hours, uh, which are quite seen or visible from the, from the light scattering uh, data. Meanwhile, with the soluble polysaccharides, we see similar morphologies of small droplets and uh, it's quite rare to see aggregates of the droplets. Meanwhile, with the Pickering emulsifier, the droplet size uh, tend to remain uniform after, uh, after storage, but most of the droplets form aggregates that are very strong compared to each other. And by comparing silence to these two other uh, solid, uh, types of emulsifiers, we can see that they're not really similar to any of them. And so what we have uh, concluded out of this study is that the silence stabilize, uh, stabilizes differently, that they have a unique stabilization mechanism compared to soluble polysaccharides and Pickering emulsifiers. So maybe there is some kind of an interplay between the two modes or maybe it's another mechanism in a, uh, completely. Then we can see that the residual lignin content and electrical charge, uh, which uh, the MGX happened to have uh, more negative charge compared to the other, but they contribute to stabilization, both positively, uh, that in terms of uh, lignin, we see more, uh, the higher the lignin, the better the stabilization, uh, and the charge, it affects the stability negatively because, which is kind of uh, counterintuitive, uh, but that's what we found at least with this, with regards to the silent. 
And then because of the uh, unique aggregation pattern that we see between the different emulsifiers, we, uh, we concluded that this system needs further interfacial studies. And one thing that we did was, of course, the adsorption uh, study. So first, comparing the different uh, silans to, uh, to the standard reference emulsifiers, uh, we see that, uh, first of all, compared to the reference uh, emulsifiers that are shown in the lower part here, only methyl cellulose shows any adsorption at the interface. Uh, which has shown that uh, this is on the upper left, we see the water and the buffer, basically the background. And then with the methyl cellulose here on the lower left, we see that it manages to lower this, uh, the interfacial tension between hexadecane and water compared to the uh, to carboxymethyl cellulose and the cellulose nanocrystals, that all three of them did not show any decrease in the interfacial tension. Uh, and meanwhile, all the silence show some degree of uh, interfacial absorption, uh, which here shows that after some time, they managed to lower the interfacial tension. Uh, however, here, uh, every, all the silence, all the carboxymethylated, ethanol precipitated, and the spray dried, they show much slower uh, absorption dynamics compared to methyl cellulose here. Like, uh, for example, here, you see that in the beginning of the measurement, it's already at around 26, 25 uh, millinewton per square meters. And meanwhile, with the silence, we, we started at the same level of interfacial tension as with the buffer. Uh, and comparing between the different grades of silence, we see that with CMGX, uh, it is the one that is absorbed the slowest shown by the uh, onset of this rapid fall of the interfacial tension happening much later compared to the ethanol precipitated and spray dried silane, uh, which coincides with the fact that CMGX is carrying more charge and therefore is more hydrophilic compared to both ethanol precipitated and the spray dried extract. Uh, another unique uh, observation is that when we compare the carboxymethylated silan with the carboxymethylated cellulose, we see that carboxymethylated silan show some interfacial activity at, while uh, carboxymethyl cellulose does not, uh, at least at this concentration, which is 0.03% weight, perc weight percent, uh, which means that lignin, which is uh, still uh, present in CMGX is essential for this absorption of these silan uh, hemicelluloses, the, uh, of these hemicelluloses. So if we remove them completely, we might not ex uh, observe any more of these absorption. And so we are, it, we are interested in what is really uh, happening here and whether uh, we can see more results by uh, changing the concentration. So that's what we did. Uh, we varied the concentration uh, between 1%, what we used at the emulsions, to very dilute systems at 0.003%. Uh, for, unfortunately, for spray dried and ethanol soluble uh, fractions, we cannot go above 0.15 and 0.1% because the solution was too, uh, too turbid to observe the, the droplets. Uh, that are formed. But uh, what we saw is that there is a concentration dependence that is happening for all parts of the silence, for all uh, grades of the silence. So we concluded that this, uh, because we see concentration dependent, it might be that the adsorption process is related to the diffusion of the travel from, uh, of the silence from the bulk phase, bulk aqueous phase to the interface, instead of uh, the adsorption process itself. Uh, and we can see here that uh, the carboxymethylated silan have very much slower adsorption dynamic com compared to the other grades of silan, which means that the hydrophilic or the hydrophobic character of the, of the hemicellulose just influences the adsorption rate to the interface. Uh, and so to compare more closely, we, we took the 0.003 percent uh, samples uh, which is ba uh, basically the most dilute concentration. Uh, and here, 
why we are comparing it at the most uh, dilute is to select only the fastest absorbing component so that any uh, er the earliest uh, fall in the interfacial tension would come from the fastest absorbing component. And here we can see that not uh, that uh, spray dried silan and ethanol soluble silan uh, has a similar absorption profile, has a similar uh, profile in the fall of the interfacial tension uh, compared to the ethanol precipitated. Uh, if we compare between the ethanol soluble and the ethanol precipitated, we would think that the ethanol pre uh, precipitated would be more, the more hydrophilic component of the extract. Uh, and so here we see that it absorbs much slower compared to the more hydrophobic uh, fraction, uh, which means that uh, despite having similar uh, profile here that we see uh, that there is a rapid fall uh, around one between 100 to 1000 seconds, we can conclude that not all components of the extract absorb at the same rate and that the components that are in the hydrophobic fraction is absorbed at the much faster rate compared to the hydrophilic fraction. Uh, so yes, the conclusion from this part of the study is that lignin is essential for absorption, but then uh, you need to also consider that the overall hydrophobicity or the hydrophilicity of the system is also important to the absorption process. And that the absorption of these glucuronoxyl into the interface is concentration dependent. Uh, and that the most interfacially active species is located in the hydrophobic fraction of the extract. Uh, however, to connect the dots between the emulsion stability and the, uh, the interfacial absorption is not exactly straightforward because they are not directly correlated. Uh, because the absorption experiments that I did with the interfacial tension, they are mainly focusing on the passive absorption behavior, which means that we're not applying additional energy or external energy. While with the stability experiments, it, uh, we made that with the high pressure homogenization, which means that it, that it involves high uh, external energy to uh, attach those emulsifiers to the interface. And therefore, we would need a direct observation of the in emulsion interface to, act to, to make a, a more solid conclusion of what is happening at the interface, whether it be through microscopy methods or through uh, scattering methods, be it X-ray or neutrons. Uh, and eventually, if we know uh, how they behave, how the different components or the, how the different fractions behave at the interface, we would like to, to eventually harness these properties to make uh, emulsions that can be tailorable. For example, you can, uh, use it as delivery system uh, that survives uh, the gastric environment or to be broken, especially in the gastric environment, something like that. Uh, so yes, uh, in that, I would like to acknowledge the Academy of Finland for funding uh, my PhD project. Uh, my colleagues, I also want to thank my colleagues in the University of Helsinki, especially uh, Sami Hietala and Sami Pekka Hirvonen for uh, letting me use their uh, optical tensiometer and also to Petra Gilbelainen from the National Res uh, Natural Resources Institute of Finland for providing us with the silent. So thank you, Kitos, uh, and I'm welcome for any inputs or uh, comments. Thank you. Kitos Samain, Felix. Thank you very much for the great insight you gave to us. Uh, we're a bit uh, after the schedule, but